Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Thomas. The podium's now on the floor, and I feel like I should be <laughs> bending my knees. Sinking feeling. That's it. Yeah. Or is that the <laughs> right, the, going down the stairs. Um, <laughs> I'll call Rusty. <laughs> oh, this is going bad already. <laughs> Man, I was worried about this morning's talk, and now it's like, no. Uh, has anybody ever forgotten their coffee cup anywhere? <laughs> so this morning we were leaving the house and we were looking for our, Leslie and I were looking for our travel mugs and the lids for them. We could only find one. We couldn't find the lid. And then we found the lid. And we got here and we noticed that the all aluminum, brushed aluminum one was here. And it's like, oh, there it is. Okay, great. And uh, I moved it. And then I was walking around the back, you know, getting my thoughts together. And, uh, and I brought a tea with me and I'm like, oh, there's my tea. Oh. oh. So that's, that's what I did a few minutes ago, <laughs> just before this talk. I, uh, I drank some of that. <laughs> Okay, so before we go any further, after that great little piece, why don't we just take a moment, <clears throat> settle in. I invite you to close your eyes. Just get quiet and present. And allow my words to be your words. Money is not the source of my supply. No person, place, or thing is the source of my supply. The divine presence I am is the source of my supply. The divine presence I am is the source of my supply. Let's just take a moment now to just gently breathe that in. Let that go. Release those words into the universal flow of law and abundance. And I invite you to take those words every morning and allow them to just resonate within, to know that there's nothing outside of us that is the source of our supply. Everything we want for ourselves and for our lives is within. See, I believe in this conversation of the spirit of money, I believe that money has energy. And I believe that energy comes from us, from how we deal with it, our thoughts, our conversations. And money is really just a construct of our reality, much like music is much like longitude or latitude are things that we've created in order to move forward in our lives. And so money is not a terrible thing and it's not a great thing. It's just money. Yet it is the overall conversation in our world of how we exchange things, how we get new things, how we get paid for our services, Right? That is the flow of money. And so it is required. However, it's not the source. And there's a difference. There's a difference between working with the whole thought of I'm just trying to get some money and working with the idea that I'm serving and money will come in as a result of my service, as a result of giving of myself then we trust and we have faith in the divine presence I am to supply because it's unlimited. And I don't really like to use words like unlimited because it's a bit of a negative. So I like to use more thing, things like it's abundant. The universal supply is absolute abundance. Anything we want, when we think about it, we can obtain it. In fact, I would argue that it's already given, it's ours for the taking, but what are the roadblocks 
that we have? What are the stops that we're putting in place to prevent us from having those things that we would like to achieve? So I have a question. What do water, blood, and money all have in common? And if, if you have an answer, you can shout it out. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Three people, circulation, two flows. That's exactly right. They all need to flow. If water sits and stagnates, what happens? It becomes undrinkable. If our blood stops flowing, what happens? We're dead. And if money stops flowing around the globe because of the dream of this planet where we have this economic system, bad things happen. If we go back to 2008, the last financial crisis before this most recent one, that is what happened. Money stopped flowing. And we were right on, the, right on the cusp of an absolute economic meltdown. Now this time in 2019, when we faced the, uh, the current crisis in, in March, the pandemic, the central banks around the world immediately stepped into action. Back in 2008, they didn't really know what to do. They had some theories. And if you go back to the Great Depression, in the Great Depression, they actually squeezed money. They stopped the flow and created even more of a problem. In 2008, it took them a little bit of time, but then they started to print money. This time, it was literally the, almost like the next day, $2 trillion in the US was created out of thin air to manage the crisis so that money could begin to flow and stay flowing. Now, I'm not getting into a conversation of whether that's right or wrong, or what that could do to us long-term, because there are implications to that. My 20 years in finance has taught me that, you know, printing money out of thin air is probably not a good idea. However, when we stop the flow, we run into problems financially. So really money is just a measuring system. It's for how we uh, consume, produce, how we share amongst each other. So that brings me to another question. What are conversations that you have about money? Now, not everybody's the same. There's some people where money just flows freely in their lives. There's no challenge at all. Yet there's a lot of people, and I've seen this in my profession, where money is a real struggle. And I'm not trying to make light of people that have a struggle with money. That's not the purpose of this. I believe that those with money, it's our duty to take care of those that are in need. However, what are conversations that you might be having? If there is a struggle with supply, whatever it is, what are conversations? What are learned beliefs that you might face? Like, I can't afford this. That costs too much. I don't have the money. Money doesn't grow on trees. These are all conversations that stop the flow of money within our lives. And you can take that to any area of your life. So, do you want more love in your life? <laughs> we have an okay, very shy okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Do you want more relationships in your life? Yes. <laughs> sure. Better relationships. <laughs> Better relationships, more communication with others. How about more money in your life? Yes. Right. What do you think is a key to having more? Giving, giving more. When we give, we receive, I think I have, yeah, I have a quote here from Buddha. Give even if you only have a little. It's the law of reciprocity that says that when we give, we get. That's the key. It's our ability to let go and live in harmony within ourselves and peacefulness that allows things to flow into our lives. That's what does it. 
I was listening to Deepak Chopra recently, and he was talking about a little game that he plays, which I found fascinating. Is uh, he doesn't live in New York City proper, he lives outside, but once in a while, he will go into New York, he will go to the bank, and he will withdraw many $20 bills. And then he will walk around the streets and hand them to people in need. Now, he doesn't just do it in a way where it's just throwing 20 bucks into a hat or, you know, here, here's 20 bucks. He stops, he makes eye contact with the person, he sees them, he communicates with them, and then he gives them some money to take care of something they might need. When we communicate with people, we get more communication in our lives. When we love people, we get more love in our lives. And we can't forget when we communicate with ourselves the things that are important to us, when we love ourselves, then we are open to more. That's the way it works. I believe. You don't have to believe this, but it works for me. So I have a story to tell of uh, my, my game of money. As I said, I've been in the game of money for 20 years in finance, and I still am. And my view of money now is far different than it used to be. However, back in my early career, I had an opportunity to move to a big bank firm. And I was working at an Edward Jones office. I had started an Edward Jones office and I was seduced by the power of the big bank and their checkbook. And so they offered me a substantial amount of money at that time for me to move my practice over to their firm. And I did, and I thought it was what I needed. Again, something outside of me was what I required, not something inside. So I chased that money over there. And within 14 months, I had phoned Leslie and uh, said, I can't do this anymore. I can't be here. I'll give you three options. One of them was to jump out the window because I had a lot of life insurance. So, you know, <laughs> that would help the family. Uh, the second one was to just end my career at that firm and start over, not really sure what I was going to do or go off on my own and take the risk that this might not work. And my wife is a wonderful comedian. And she said, well, option one does have some, <laughs> <laughs> which was the exact humor that I needed, right? Like, it was just like, ah, oh, thank you for that. Yes, it's great. <laughs> uh, but you know, her, her, her words to me with, were whatever you, whatever you need to do, I have your back, I'm with you. Now here's the sad part of this. I eventually decided to go off on my own. However, this is like 14, maybe 15 months later, the money that they paid me, I had to pay back. And I didn't have the money anymore. That money was gone, it was spent. And so that was a, you know, for me, that was a stumbling block. Like how can I, I have to figure out how I'm gonna pay this money back and I don't have this money that they gave me. And it was, you know, $120,000, $140,000 somewhere in there that they had fronted me. And I had conversations with them and we agreed that I would pay them around $8,000 a month till it was paid off. Yeah, I'm like, seriously, you wanna talk about your back up against the wall. My back was up against the wall. However, it all worked out. Yes, I had to work really hard. How, my being there was killing me. And one of the things Leslie said to me was, since you've moved your business, you have been no fun to be around. So it was money or my life, which was more important. And I chose my life. Now, I still didn't have anywhere near the consciousness that I have today. Otherwise, that decision probably would have been really easy. Would have been like, ah, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. The money will show up somehow. <laughs> you know, I was stressed. There were some, there were some, you know, tough moments through all of that. However, it all worked out. So looking back on that, 
going through that experience and standing here today, I can say money is not the source of my supply because there was no amount of money back then that seemed to be a challenge. It showed up. I'm a good person. It somehow showed up in my life to make it whole. And yet so many of us are a bit of a slave to that thing, that thing called money. And we don't have to be, we can let it flow. When I started at Unity, one of the first classes I did was the prosperity course. And it's a 40 day practice, a ritual every day. And if you miss a day, you have to start from the beginning. So, uh, you know, once you're 10 days in, you probably don't want to miss a day. For me, once I was 30 days in, there was no way I was missing a day. You know, I'm pretty good at setting up practice routines. However, what that taught me and what that opened me up to was the idea that there is a natural flow in the universe. And we need to break from the chains of fear, of insufficiency, of lack, of greed, of hatred, of judgment. If we can let go of all of those things, not only does it free up our ability to attract money, it frees up our ability to attract everything. Because true abundance is not just about money. Money is great. If you want to do really good work in the world and accomplish some really great things for people, you probably need money. That's just the way the system is. However, if you're open and able to attract, think of the great things you could do in the world. When you have love, joy, happiness, you have the flow of cash moving through your system. So we can't think in terms of hoarding. It has to be a flow. Just as we said, what happens when water, blood, and money stop flowing? It's not good. So with our money, we need to get into the habit of flow. I'll close with um, something from scripture, the widow's offering. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. And I'm not suggesting that's what people do. The lesson there, the teaching there is the give, just as Buddha said, give even when you only have a little. And I'm not suggesting you give it to unity. That's not what this conversation is for. This conversation is about giving freely to others, being able to be of service to others, whatever that is, be it money, love, service, communication. You know, they need help moving. Yesterday, I needed to get hay for our goats. For those that don't know, we have goats and I talk a lot about the goats because they're really funny. They're two little Nigerian dwarf goats, so they only come up to the knees and they'll headbutt each other like they're really tough. It's, it's quite cute. We have some people staying in our Airbnb suite and I didn't want to insure my pickup truck and the gentleman downstairs is going to be with us for a while and he was offering, you know, is there anything I can do? I'm bored. You know, if you have anything you can do, I said, well, this Saturday I need some hay. Let's get in my truck and go. <laughs> There you go. Yesterday, I, I didn't have to go through the process of insuring my truck to get hay. He just offered. And I have a new friend now. Like we spent time driving to get the hay. He helped me, you know, load it, all of that stuff. It was a great day with him. And our friendship became something more than a guy staying in my basement. So allow yourself 
to be free of those chains of lack and limited beliefs and conversations of nothing. We are abundant beings. Everything is ours. We can have access to all of it. And there's a path to do that. So I invite you to join me again as we close off. Just notice your breath. Money is not the source of my supply. No person, place, or thing is the source of my supply. The divine presence I am is the source of my supply. And know that any conversation that you're having, if you're having one, of lack or disappointment or frustration. There's a neighbor that you're not at peace with. Maybe a friend or relative that you've had a disagreement with. Know that that's fine, that happens. That's what it means to be human. And also know that you have the answer within to clear that path. That you hold the key to setting yourself free from it. I invite you to just take a moment in silence with me. And as we go into silence, I invite you to bring something to mind that you can be grateful for in this moment. Whatever first pops into your thinking, don't judge it, just be with it, be grateful. Gently bring yourself back to your present place and time. You can wiggle your fingers and your toes if you'd like. And join me on a nice deep inhale through the nose. Let it go. Namaste. Namaste. Ooh.